This is Hermann Ebbinghaus, a famous German psychologist who in 1885 carried out a series of memory experiments that concluded in the discovery of the forgetting curve and the spacing effect. He was also the first person to describe what we now call the learning curve. Hermann Ebbinghaus was able to show in 1885 that if new information is not rehearsed or restudied, more than 50% of that information will be lost within just one single hour. After which the rate at which this new information is forgotten dramatically slows down. And that's why if you're studying for a test or an exam, it's never really ever a good idea to go over the information just once. Repetition is key and spacing out your revision sessions will almost always yield better results. But don't take my word for it, let me show you why. As you can see from the graph, students who completed 10 permutation problems in one single study session performed significantly worse when tested 4 weeks later than students who did the same number of problems but split the 10 problems over 2 sessions 2 weeks apart. What this basically tells us is that you can probably cram for an exam and do reasonably well, depending of course on how difficult the material and how much of it there is, but if someone were to ask you about the material that you were examined on a week later, you probably would have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. My name is Hashem and I'm a University of Cambridge graduate and student doctor and I explain complex ideas in medicine simply in a way that everyone can understand without needing a medical degree. And last week I published a video about how excess sugar consumption during childhood can lead to memory impairment in adult life and one of you awesome peeps requested I do a video on how to improve memory and recall and study smarter. So I guess here we are. This video will include an explanation of the limitations of short term memory as well as the strategy that I personally use to learn and memorize things so that I am able to retrieve them later. All I ask is for you to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel if you feel that this video has helped you in any way. If you subscribe you'll get to see more videos just like this and you'll get so much more awesome content. So no reason not to subscribe really. Numerous studies have demonstrated that for learning to be effective, the material needs to be reviewed over ever increasing time intervals. What this means is that you study one chapter today and then you study the same chapter tomorrow but you do not study it the day after. After every revision session you give yourself a little bit more time before you go back to that same material until you have mastered it so that that knowledge has the chance to move from your short term memory to your long term long-term memory. And your long-term memory is precisely where you want that knowledge to be. Because while your long-term memory is theoretically infinite, meaning that it can hold an infinite amount of information, your short-term memory on the other hand is supremely limited. According to Harvard University psychologist George Miller's highly influential paper, the magic number 7 plus or minus 2, you can only really hold 7 integrated pieces of information in your short term memory at any one time. And that's why phone numbers that are longer than 7 digits are near impossible to remember. In fact, the only way you can really remember a phone number that is longer than 7 digits in length is to break it down into fewer, larger chunks. Chances are that's probably how you memorize your phone number when you first got it. And because your short term memory is so supremely limited it's also more vulnerable to interference meaning that the knowledge that you gained can easily be forgotten and replaced by things that you come across between studying or cramming for an exam and the actual exam the next morning. It's also worth noting that as illustrated by George A. Miller, it's virtually impossible to strengthen or to train your short term memory. In fact, starting from age 20, we begin to see an age related decline in your short term memory. So if cramming for an exam is working out well for you while at school, I just want to remind you that as you get a little bit older, it might not work well anymore when you're in college or university or when you become a working adult. Now that we've established that cramming information into your short term memory is supremely inferior, 
Surely the best way to learn would be to study, restudy, and restudy again. The same material until it's deeply ingrained into your long term memory. And all your hair turns grey with grief. Well, no. I mean, at least that's not how I personally choose to study, and today I will be telling you about my four step method. The first step is to break down the material that you need to cover into smaller, more manageable chunks. I will typically first read through a chapter and highlight the text and then get a pen and a piece of lined paper out and begin listing headings, subheadings, sub-subheadings, and so on. And once I'm happy that I've broken down each topic into its smallest possible constituents, I get my flashcards and my coloring pens out. If you don't believe me, here they are. The idea is to create flashcards for each of the subtopics that you've listed down, and you want these flashcards to be memorable, so don't be afraid to make them as colourful as you want them to be. You want to look at these flashcards and feel that they are screaming at you to memorise the facts and information that is on them. And of course, the more diagrams, illustrations and tables that you can put, the better. Studies have illustrated that your visual and your spatial memory can be trained up, and once you are able to harness their power, you might be surprised at all the things that you will be able to remember. But what you should absolutely, absolutely never do is to copy text straight from your textbook. If you choose to use words, then make sure that those words are your own, so explain things in your own words and simplify them. And if you can do that to the point where someone who doesn't study your subject can read through your notes and your flashcards and get a really good idea of the subject or topic, then probably you know your stuff really well. This is called the Feynman Technique, by the way. One other thing is don't be afraid to make up stories about the things that you need to learn, and don't be afraid to make those stories silly or weird. The more weird or silly the stories are, the more likely they are to incite an emotional response in you. And if they do that, then you're more likely to remember them, and remember the pieces of information that are attached to those stories. You should eventually get to a point where you can look at a flashcard and know exactly where each piece of information is on that flashcard. So when you're asked a question during an exam, your mind is able to identify the topic and the subtopic and is able to retrieve the flashcard that has the information you need to answer that question and knows exactly where that information is on that flashcard. You're essentially using your visual and spatial memory in a technique that is similar to building a memory or a mind palace. But instead of using a room, my house or a fictional palace, I am incredibly lazy, so I just use a piece of A5 paper and create a map through the use of colour, location on flashcard and stories that I am far, far too embarrassed to share with you guys. And if you do all that, you will be giving a meaningless bit of information, visual, spatial and emotional value, changing it from meaningless to meaningful. I like to think of it as giving it a hanger to hang on so that you can easily find it and remember it. Once you're reasonably comfortable with the material, the best thing that you can do is to test your knowledge. This can be done by doing practice questions or even a mock exam. And this will obviously allow you to identify areas of weakness, but it will strengthen areas that are already strong. This is because every single time you answer a question about a particular topic, your brain has to dig deep into itself to find the relevant piece of information. And every time you do that, you make that piece of information easier to access in the future. I genuinely think that using this four-step strategy can help to maximize your learning capacity, potentially opening up storage space in your brain where you previously thought there was none. What you'll notice is that in every step of this process there is a ton or a lot of active learning, which is so much more superior to passive learning, which involves just reading a book or something, which is something that I don't personally recommend. If you have to read your textbook, then make sure you have a highlighter and a pen in hand so you can highlight and underline the text as you go through it. That way you are turning a very passive process into an active one. And people who study smart don't study passively.
So try all these things out and tell me in the comments how it goes for you. And remember that expecting your mind to remember things while you treat your body badly is the epitome of madness. So make sure you sleep well, eat a healthy and a balanced diet, exercise, and definitely don't forget to breathe. My name is Hashem, and this is Dr. Tell Me Why, and you should give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And of course, don't forget to press the bell icon. Love every single one of you to bits, and see you all next week.